Hi, and welcome back to another episode of the History of Fan Anime. I'm your host, William Chow, and in today's episode, I'm going to talk about, um, you know, the, shall I say, the precursor to what a modern convention is, and basically, that is how we used to get together to watch anime, okay? Now, in Vancouver, we made something called the, you know, the uh, Vancouver Japanese Animation Club, and that's how we basically um, scheduled monthly meetings where basically people would, you know, could come together at a, you know, at a, you know, sort of a community place or, you know, a public place, and then we'd be able to watch anime, uh, um, you know, uh, at the beginning on the small sort of TV or type of thing, uh, and then of course we, as we got bigger, we went into a, a larger uh, theater type of uh, atmosphere, okay? So I'm going to go over some of that kind of stuff and show, show you, um, you know, some of the things that we did and um, you know how what we kind of you know how big it sort of kind of got uh, and what kind of things that we actually showed right so okay so um, here we are in the basically pre internet era okay and uh, you know you kind of wonder well you know say I'm an anime fan or whatever how would I go and find anime when there's really no way to really sort of know about uh, you know, anime as it uh, as we know it, right? Because obviously, we're at an era where, for example, we don't have uh, internet, so we can't kind of uh, you know go to Facebook or something, or you know uh, find the, and pour, or post things up on the internet so that people will know about it. So, um, how would you you know if you're an anime fan, uh, know where to go, or you know if you were liking anime. Uh, how would you know, you know, the, these places that anime, okay? Well, a lot of people, what they do is they, they would go and they would go to, let's say, a, like a, a bookstore or a music store or something like that, and they might find, um, you know, a small little pile of leaflets or a little a, a pile of, uh, of ads, okay? And um, that's how we, we started doing, uh, the, you know, the basically grassroots uh, sort of how anime got started okay and basically um, when I started uh, doing anime and uh, basically trying to uh, get people to you know basically make anime more available uh, you know not only just doing fan subs and that kind of stuff but locally trying to get um, and provide a source of anime for different people okay and so what we did was is, is I basically made you know these sort of um, kind of anime posters okay so here's one particular one for uh, for uh, one of the anime showcases, right? You know, you know so you can see just a standard, you know, piece of paper, okay? And it uh, basically lists, uh, you know, some various videos that we're, that we're, we're gonna play. We picked up a particular um, date, okay? It was usually a Sunday. Uh, this is February 18th of 2001. And we're gonna run it from basically 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., okay? So, you know, it's a Sunday afternoon, um, you know, uh, you were basically had nothing better to do. Um, you could go out to this uh, place here. This is uh, basically um, we rented a, a, a room at uh, Douglas College. Um, you know, uh, down in uh, Burnaby there, or uh, newest minister in this case, um, the newest minister Sky Train Station there. Uh, it was room 1606. Okay, and it's basically one of the large lecture hall theaters. And then there you can go and get uh, to the ability to watch some anime. Okay, so. What is this sort of thing like? Okay, so so here you are. You know, again, you're just a you know maybe a fan or you know maybe a very very casual fan of anime. Um, you don't really know where to get it. You don't know the people or anything like that. You know, you know, you're not part of any sort of school. Okay, that um, that, that that has an anime club. So you don't know where to go. So you know, here you are. You're you're maybe shopping at a uh, at your local comic book store or maybe a, a local bookstore. Um, I know we went to some. Uh, um, you know, uh, different sort of places, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, various different, uh, um, we went to like record stores and that kind of stuff and, and whatnot, and we just kind of posted the, uh, these ads and, and whatnot in places that, um, you know, either had a free bulletin board, um, some places had like, you know, a, a, a place that you can, you know, stack, you know, a whole bunch of these little mini little flyers like this you know it's just, just a small little stack of them so that maybe you know a person would could pick one of these things up and say hey okay oh, all right I'll, you know I'll, I'll maybe i'll have the ability to check these things out right 
And so I left those all over various uh, the other different parts of, uh, of of Vancouver, you know, Richmond and Burnaby and uh, New Westminster and you know, North Vancouver, wherever we could uh, to post these things up and uh, and basically get the word up. Okay, and someone would maybe you know pick one of these things up and then, then be able to go down to uh, the, one of our showcases and then they'll be able to watch some different anime. Okay, now what was this experience sort of like? Well, I, I've managed to find some uh, some again some photographs. Of uh, you know some of the, the, the conventions that are these little anime showcases that we did, uh, as well as some of the old ads that we used to run. Uh, so I'll go through some of them, uh, give you an idea of what kind of you know setting and that kind of stuff that is, as well as what we actually showed. All right. Okay. So yeah, you basically now get, you know figured out that uh, you know there's uh, this place that you can go to to basically uh, watch some various different anime. Now, again, we started off really, really small, okay? Um, I'm gonna pull up a picture here for you guys so that you can see it. So, you can see on the screen now, um, one of the original pictures of um, what we refer to as, you know, the Trout Lake Community Center, okay? So, no, the Trout Lake Community Center is, again, one of these sort of, uh, I've mentioned it in the past, uh, in previous streams, but it's basically a very small sort of local community you know, community center. Um, you know, they basically, um, you know, rent out rooms to for you know for parties and wedding receptions and you know, banquets and that kind of stuff. Uh, in this particular case, we basically rented out a room, which normally would be used for, um, uh, uh, you know, like, like gatherings or that kind of stuff, a banquet or something or whatever, maybe or uh, you know, uh, uh, some sort of um, you know meeting. Uh, I think sometimes they do like a. Uh, like recitals or something like that's in it here, and basically the you know the we, we basically um, you know have a bunch of people, uh, you know anime fans and that stuff come, and uh, you know they had a, a sort of a big uh, sort of TV inside a, um, a sort of a, a wooden cabinet. Okay, so you know very synonymous with those old fashioned uh, you know um, you know like. Uh, you know, 30, maybe 40 inch TV inside a big wooden cabinet with a VCR and that kind of stuff. And they basically, you know, push the things around and, uh, you know, and uh, you could you know, push it into one of these, um, you know, rooms. And then we'd basically play anime on it and basically allow the, the you know, the, the fans to watch anime. And again, you know, very impromptu. You can see just very random chairs and that kind of set up. Uh, in sort of a semicircle, basically around the TV, and basically this gives people the opportunity to come in and and watch different animes. You know, sure, it wasn't on like a very big screen, obviously not very great sound or anything like that, but just you know enough to to get the interest and get them them started, right? And you know, that's it. We had you know really small sort of gatherings and that kind of stuff um, um, to basically show off this uh, various different animes that that were available. And you know, so now that I'm actually looking at this picture, it's kind of funny because I said. Um, uh, you know, we make an episode where you know we're talking about anime T-shirts. You know, I'll just kind of uh, take this out, uh, off here for a second. You know, we're all wearing these sort of anime T-shirts, right? Like here, basically, you know, we basically um, you know printed uh, you know a, a sort of an image or whatever that that, that we liked, uh, and then basically you know, as it were, you know, take a, take a you know take a piece of paper type of thing, and then basically placed it onto a shirt like this, and then basically ironed you know. You know, basically use a, a pressing system to press and put that image on right so that was a new way to set the kind of because again anime t-shirts weren't um uh, really common uh you know things to get right now right because said uh, you can't just go to you know walmart and you know here's a dragon ball t-shirt or anything that you know they, you know they that just wasn't wasn't happening right so a lot of people had to make their own shirts so if we just go back to the image here you know um you can see, you know, just how many people are actually kind of wearing these sort of, you know, uh, you know, plain you know, sort of with a white T-shirt with an with an anime image on it. Here you go, and you know, and it's kind of funny to note that both, uh, you know, the, the, the people people see on in, in the picture are they're both wearing orange road picture, uh, you know, T-shirts with Madoka on them. So obviously you can see that that you know we're in an era where you know or we, when we just started subtitling Orange Road and that was really the, you know the really big deal and a lot of people were really getting into that you know series and and uh, that was very very popular. So again, that's kind of a, 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 a an interesting note and basically an interesting kind of a you know reflection of of, of what uh, you know the, this part of time history uh, was. Okay, so.
anyway, so, um, so you can see, uh, we, that's how we first started, you know, very, very small sort of, uh, gatherings and that kind of stuff, uh, you know, uh, when we, uh, you know, doing anime showings, that kind of stuff. And then slowly, we're getting more and more people, um, you know, the technology is starting to get a little bit bigger, so we needed a larger space. So then we started going over to, uh, Douglas College, okay? Now, after, um, we basically, uh, uh, you know, basically outgrew, uh, the Trout Lake Community Center, uh, we shifted over to a larger venue, and the larger venue we decided to pick was a, um, a place called Douglas College. It's a, you know, it's a, it's a basically a, a local community college. And the advantage of the local community college is that the college itself is allowed to, to be, you know, to, again, to rent the rooms for, you know, presentations and, and uh, you know, um, you know, maybe sales meetings or that kind of stuff. Or in the, in the case, what we're doing is we're basically using the AV equipment uh, available to basically show off, um, you know, Japanese animation. And you can see that there's a, a much larger projection screen uh, here available. And you know, again, there's a you know lots of seating because of obviously this is, you know, you would think primarily made for students, right? Obviously, who and uh, you know, then you'd have the basically the teacher, the professor down at the bottom there using the AV equipment or the overhead projector to to basically teach the lesson. Um, you know, maybe do drawings or what whatnot, and and basically, um, you know, you, you know, use larger screens so that uh, you know the the students can see stuff. And also, uh, in this sort of situation, you know, you can bring a laptop with uh, you know um, you know PowerPoint or whatever. You hook it up to the large projector, and then you can show stuff. But in our situation, we decided no, no, no. What we're, we're, we're going to hook up, um, you know, a, uh, a VCR or a laser disc. We're going to hook it up to this machine, and then we basically we're going to project anime onto the large screen. And as you can also see, there's also two large speakers at the front. I remember we we did, uh, you know, we played so much anime. We we, we we you know, and we you know did some some pretty uh, you know some pretty good loud stuff in there. And I think we you know. We were responsible for probably you know, you know wrecking those speakers and and, and, bought, <laughs> and blowing out the woofers in them when we did some of the animes that was with the, that we did on that one. But uh, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. Anyway, so so you can see that this is a, you know a fairly large room where we can collect a lot of people to to, to come and watch different sorts of anime. And um, I'm just going to just, just change the angle here. Once a month, Chow brings together fans to a local college to watch anime for hours. This film is playing on a big screen. People are sitting in a dark auditorium and they're watching intently. <laughs> At intermission time, I meet two teenagers wearing t-shirts and baseball caps. Glenn Reed. And yourself? Nathan Holmes. In general, I like it because it's like different from other stuff, like different culture and all that. I like it because like every month is different. It, like they'll have themes. Like say in April, I think uh, they have uh, which which one is uh, Valentine's Day? Yeah, February. February, yeah, in February they have like a Valentine's Day theme. So every month is sort of different. The, the word in, in, in anime is, is otaku. Uh, it's basically a you know a person that's uh, you know, an avid fan. We may have a very large uh, video library of something. A, a person who, you know, lives, breathes, and drinks <laughs> anime, I guess. You know, a fun view of the uh, of the uh, um, uh, studio there, okay? And you can see, you know, it's, it's a good mixture of different people. I mean, sure, primarily, you know, uh, a, a sort of a male-oriented audience, uh, um, you know, th th that is there. And... And a, a good mixture of of, of, uh, of people from you know youthful sort of you know you know high school sort of kids I guess you can say uh, college students and that kind of stuff and there's, you know sprinkling some some you know some some uh, you know some more you know seniors some older um, people uh, in there as well uh, but yeah a good variety of ranges of ages and um, what this this is really nice about this is that you know we didn't um, you know. It, what was really nice about this sort of era was is, is, is that it really was about the anime, right? It was really about trying to get the anime out to the to you know to to the people, and 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 the, the most interesting thing was the anime itself. Okay, people were so much interested, more interested 
in the you know the artwork or the or the you know the stories or the, or, the, or you know just just that, just that newness that um, that uh, this uh, genre of anime was. It w wasn't about uh, you know um, you know you know like it is now where it's uh, it's all about me. It's about cosplay. It's it's, it's what I can do with the anime uh, or you know. No, no, or, you know, look at me. You know, this is what my my sort of thing uh, or spin or whatever product or whatever we have about the anime. No, no, this is a time where I think um, you know everyone came and wanted you know this you know wanted to know more about this thing called anime and 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 the the product was the anime. Okay, and again, when we weren't um, you know. Judging people for the fact that oh you know I only like watching you know shoujo animes or I only watch watching uh, you know magical girl shows or I only like watching hentai, um, it, you know we didn't care we just you know we just, we just we just wanted people to you know basically expose them to some anime give them some new things to watch new titles that they may not have you know known about um, and just to see um, you know what this genre is about and, and that, that's it a lot of people's minds were really open to what was out there right you know because again we tried to mix these uh, titles up uh, as best as we could um you know giving some different choices and that kind of stuff um and um you know just to you know to get you know make sure that the, the, that we kind of uh, hit all the different people the other people that was on there so i'm just gonna give another view of the audience here okay so yeah, it says you know it's a you know as you can see it's a, it's a fairly you know large size um, you know auditorium type of uh, um, you know uh, you know school classroom okay um, and it is you know it's probably about half full of, of the, the, the and this would be probably like you know an, an average sort of meeting of, of different people and whatnot and uh, you know and whatnot and you can see right at the very front there you know you know you know you're basically old fashioned you know, three color RGB type of uh, projector, okay, that the, uh, the that the college used, and basically, you know, we basically hook up the uh, you know the the VCR or laserdisc, um, you know, just using standard audio video cables and that kind of stuff to the projector, and then we basically um, would uh, you know uh, play it from there, right? Um, there are times where we would have to um, hook up uh, a uh, you know. Uh, our own stereo system because a lot of times uh, you know especially for uh, larger features and that kind of stuff where we needed more volume we wanted you know um, you know really good you know, you know the you know Dolby surround sound or whatever then we would actually you know bring in a Dolby surround sound uh, amp we'd bring in extra speakers um, and whatnot and we'd run those all over the place I think on this example here I can see that you know we, we, we've uh, brought an extra set of speakers and we've taped uh, along the walls there, um, uh, speaker wire and that kind of stuff, so that uh, they all that will you know take care of the the back speakers and that kind of stuff there. Okay, so you know, so we we, yeah, we would bring our own system you know in because they said the college didn't have uh, you know surround sound in, in, in that sense, but you know, you know we brought our own equipment to to to, to help um, you know enhance that uh, you know that theater sort of surround sound uh, um, um, uh, experience. Okay. And uh, so, so, you can, so that's the sort of those pictures that we have uh, from the inside. Um, I'll show you one sort of picture that we had uh, as well uh, from the outside. Uh, so, in the college of you know 1606 uh, or 1604, um, were two sort of lecture hall theaters. You know, pretty much at the end of the uh, the hallway. Uh, you can see there's a whole bank like of lockers, uh, uh, student lockers, and that kind of stuff. And then basically, uh, you know, the, the, they had the, uh, the entrance to the, to the room at the very, very end here. Um, what we did is, is uh, as you can see, we, we've uh, put two lines of tape down, okay? And so some of the larger meetings that we had to do, we had so many people that we actually had to start queuing lines. And basically, we'd ran these two uh, sort of, you know, pieces of masking tape uh, down the, uh, the hallway here. Uh, basically, one lineup was basically for the people who uh, were not members of the Vancouver Japanese Animation Club and people who were. Um, a lot of these um, meetings that we that we did, um, uh, if it was a regular sort of meeting, um, you know, sort of like you know, sort of an afternoon meeting or whatever, um, 
the uh, the the people who paid uh, for the membership. It's a twenty dollar uh, membership for an entire year, but uh, you know those people um, would get in for free. Okay, the, you didn't have to pay uh, to get into our monthly meetings. Um, people who are not members, um, you you paid three dollars. Okay, and that was just to basically offset the you know the the, the price of admission, uh, the, or, or to, you know, for us to rent the room. Um, I remember when we rented the rooms uh, over at um, uh, Trout Lake, it was like ten bucks an hour or something like that. So so a typical room was like fifty bucks. Okay, and um, Douglas College was a little bit more expensive. I think was to rent the room for an entire afternoon was like a hundred bucks or something like that to, to rent the uh, the room. Uh, a Douglas College. So you, so you think, you know, hey, you know, if we get, you know, 30 people or so, 33 people or whatever, uh, they, they show up at a particular meeting, uh, then, you know, we pretty much broke even on on, on the, uh, you know, on the rental of the uh, of the hall, right? So, um, you know, so, you know, it's, it, that, that was, you know, that, that was, you know, wasn't always the situation. Uh, we didn't always get more than 30 people, but you know, there, there was just sort of a way to economically get out there and let people, um, you know, watch and get to the, the sort of uh, get, get to watch some of this animation. Okay. Yeah. Outside in the hallway, William Chow is sitting at a desk littered with flyers about anime. He says the contingent of diehard fans is growing. Yeah, we already have more well-known, more well-accepted. Uh, subcultures like you know Star Trekkies or Star Wars uh, you know type of people they do all the same things uh, when, whenever I go to conventions you know you'll see people you know uh, dressed up in you know Star Trek uniforms and you'll see people dressed up in like as Jedi's and that kind of stuff um, but uh, yeah I think anime uh, pretty well has a, a very similar subculture okay so we went over basically how uh, we basically had uh, different uh, anime showcases where we basically showed different animes to uh, you know people and we basically gathered together at let's say um, um, let's say a Douglas College or Shell Lake so now today this part I'm going to discuss and show some of the uh, flyers and some of the videos that we actually showed during these meetings and just just to give you an idea um, you know what you would expect if you were just sort of a, a budding anime fan and you didn't know where to get the anime from and you didn't know like you know how to you know see anime but you you know you, you were Maybe uh, you know going by uh, the library or going by a record store or your comic book store, and you come across one of these ads, you know, like this, for example, posted on like, a bulletin board or something, and then saying, you know, hey, there's you know there's this uh, group that's showing anime out there, okay, and then you read it, and you know, maybe you know they you know, you know, take down some of the information, and then you show up at one of these meetings, and then you get this is what you get to see, okay, um, either that or maybe. You know, we used to post uh, these little things here. These are little, um, you know, sort of, you know, quarter sheet ha handout sheets. We drop these off at, let's say, a comic book store, or um, you know, maybe we go to like a record store, and then, you know how they have this little stack of, uh, you know, uh, DJs and clubs and that kind of stuff or whatever, uh, you know, things or raves, whatever. Um, and then people would go by them. They'd pick up one of these little flyer sheets and say, "Hey, there's a you know this place is showing some anime. Let's go and you know check it out." Okay, so basically, um, you know, so then they would show up uh, to, to uh, one of our uh, meetings either at the uh, you know Trout Lake Community Center or, or Douglas College, and then uh, they'd be able to hey, you know, spend an afternoon. Usually, it's a Sunday afternoon, uh, watching some anime. So basically, uh, I'm going to go over some of the uh, ads and that kind of stuff that we actually had, and just sort of talk about some of the animes that we were trying to feature. And um, you know, maybe you know why we picked some of the titles that we did, and uh, give you sort of an indication of um, you know what we had available and uh, and what people were sort of watching, and maybe getting some suggestions of things. So again, we we try to pick animes that were like you know popular, um, that would have a sort of a general um, appeal, because obviously you know we had uh, really no idea that um, you know. Um, certain genres were going to be really popular. Like, you know, you didn't want to have like you know nothing but fighting shows. We didn't want to have um, you know uh, all these uh, you know you know uh, you know or the other way around. We didn't want to have all these you know sort of romance or magical girl shows or whatever like that. We want to basically have a little bit for everyone, so that everyone you know regardless of what sort of you know why you're watching anime or you know what sort of genre that you came in for anime whether it's you're one of the younger kids uh you know go, you know going to high school or whatever college kids 
um, to the older group, which you know, sort of you know, interested in all the classical titles like that. This time would maybe like be like the Robotex and the Macrosses, you know, Mecha shows and that kind of stuff, right? So we want to be able to you know appeal to those people as well. Okay, so let's go through some of the ads and just sort of uh, uh, you know sort of talk about them. And, and so I'll just sort of bring them up here. So here we have uh, oh, one of our you know you know sort of it's, it's a pretty typical ad. Okay. Um, uh, this particular ad is again, um, see, it's, uh, again for Douglas College, uh, you know, again, the, the room that we normally picked is, is 1606, uh, and, uh, this is for August 16th, 1998, okay, um, and basically, um, uh, you know, we usually use an entire afternoon, okay, so, uh, uh you know, to, to show our basic anime and our different showcases right here. Um, you can see here that we're uh, on this particular episode. We're doing the Gundam Wing OEVAs, so the the, the uh, three um, special OEVA episodes for Gundam Wing. We basically, I guess, we we cut them together. You know, got took out uh, took out the opening and the theme song pieces and that kind of stuff, and basically cut it together into a you know a concise sort of movie format, and basically made it into a you know kind of a really you know tight uh, show there. Okay. Uh, at uh, one thirty, we're doing uh, Mahol Sky Tai, the uh, OVA number one and two. So that's uh, sort of your magical girl uh, kind of type of things. Um, this was a big one. Yeah, the uh, we, we did uh, Ghost in the Shell at uh, two thirty. Okay, and you think did Ghost in the Shell come out in nineteen ninety eight? And you, and you probably think and you know that might not have been actually uh, uh, you know the actual release date. Um, that was probably one of the titles that we actually fan subbed specifically for this uh, showcase type of thing. So it wasn't actually um, on video cassette or on, uh, on the thing, uh, on um, you know, commercial release at this particular time. But for the showcases that we did in th this time, we actually took the laser discs that we had, and I remember we, we got the uh, special limited edition uh, 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 LD box set for this particular thing, and then we basically yeah, did the subtitles and that kind of stuff on that, and put it up on the large screen, um, just ahead of the actual release time, to actually, you know, you know, you know to show at our, 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 what they refer to as these super meets, okay? Um, and then, um, and then that was sort of like our afternoon show, because uh, you can see that um, I can see at the very top there, um, you know, the, the, the different breakdowns and things. So if you had a, a Vancouver Japanese Animation VA, VJAC uh, membership, um, you were able to get into this thing absolutely for free. Okay, so this was a free event for you guys uh, that, that were members, um, and uh, you know you could just sit there for uh, uh, um, all day uh, watching anime. Okay. Uh, half day membership, so that's basically the after the, the 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 middle part of the afternoon. So for basically from noon to about four o'clock, um, you could uh, get in there and get in for three bucks. And uh, the full day is basically uh, the, you know the, the full feature because what we're doing at the end there was the uh, at five o'clock was the Golden Boy movie edition. So basically, we basically took like the all six episodes of uh, Golden Boy. And I remember Dan bought the limited edition gold, uh, you know, Golden Boy uh, D, uh, Laserdisc box set. Um, and uh, he has a pretty funny story about that, where he actually got it signed uh, by the by the uh, by the guy there, and everyone was, was quite amazed, what, you, know, what, you know, what that was, because he said, uh, uh, you know, when the guy was there to do the signings and that kind of stuff, everyone was bringing in, you know, some pretty mundane kind of Golden Boy merchandise to, to get him to sign, and then all of a sudden, you know. <laughs> this limited edition, you know, laser disc box set thing comes up, and uh, he was really like uh, you know, quite amazed that that, that that anyone over here actually has something that um, specialized uh, there. So um, anyway, so um, yeah, so five bucks for for the whole day sort of uh, animated there. Cause of, so but again, uh, and again, usually what we did is is the slightly uh, you know riskier title, shall we say, you know. Uh, PG, you know, 17 kind of kind of stuff. We usually put on uh, at the later part of the the, the day, um, you know, to basically you know, you, know, you know showcase all that kind of stuff there. Okay, so that's an example of of, of one sort of uh, meeting that we did there. Um, so this is a you know again this is a, a shorter meeting then. Okay, um, this one is for uh, August the uh, August the uh, 11th. Okay, uh, 2000. And eight. I can't even read that. Jeez. <laughs> it's 
still fuzzy. Let's see if I find the original one here before that, so I can. I took pictures of all these things earlier on, so. <laughs> there we go. It's, uh, yeah, okay, so there we go. So again, the original ad would look, would look something like this, okay? So again, this is one of these ads that, uh, uh, you know, would be a, like a, uh, a standard um, ad like this, but it's, you know, been cut to a quarter of the size like that, right? So it's designed for, you know, a quarter sheet. And you cut four of them, and then we, you know we can leave a stack of these in a, in a comic book store or whatever uh, for that. So, so yeah, so this would be for uh, the uh, animation showcase that we're doing in August nineteenth, uh, two thousand. Okay, and uh, basically it runs from two o'clock to six o'clock. We're running uh, Double Zeta Gundam episodes uh, thirteen and fourteen. Uh, now thirteen is the nice one, is because again that's the end of, uh, of the first season. Uh, or, or, you know, uh, half season of uh, Double Zeta Gundam, uh, so it's usually a summary episode, so that that really works out pretty well. Um, we're also doing Ronin Kenshin that day, um, episodes um, uh, eight, nine, ten, and eleven for Ronin Kenshin. So that, that was really a good block of Kenshin. And then we're also then featuring uh, the first two episodes of Red Riding Hood Cha Cha Azukun Cha Cha uh, on that particular day. Now, Double Zeta Gundam, of course, is one of my, you know, one of my favorite sort of shows that, I, I, again, I, I, I loved that series, and, and um, I was really happy to, you know, to actually go through and do the subtitles of that one. Um, I know uh, Daisuke really loved um, Red Riding and Cha-Cha. That's one of those sort of, you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you, know, you know, Bugs Bunny kind of humor, right? A lot of the jokes and that kind of stuff, um, you, you really got to look at it two different ways, because it, it could... You can interpret it that way, and and, and, and you know, there, there's a there's a kid sort of way to look at it, and then there's sort of an adult way to sort of look at it, and it kind of comes out a little bit differently both ways. So that's kind of cool. Okay, so here's another one here. Uh, this is for the July 19th meeting, 1998. Okay, and again, this is one of these uh, extended meetings that we that, that we did. Uh, we started off with uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion. Okay, at 12 o'clock there. Uh, very very popular series. Uh, we did we did a lot of Evangelion because it's just at that time it was a, it was the, you know the big Gainax feature. Okay, a lot of uh, you know people um, you know um, were really following that one because it, because it was it was it was a combination of having the right sort of characters, um, you know, just enough action uh, in, like in the episode, plus also just. What the heck was gonna, you know, what was what was the end result? What was gonna happen, uh, 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 you know, after all these angels and stuff? So you know, you know, keep coming, everyone becoming harder and harder and harder, right? So um, it was it was really well done for that time. So we so you know, so we did uh, some episodes of uh, of, of that uh, for a July meeting. We did um, uh, eight hundred one TTS air bats. Uh, that was really fun because a lot of people, you know. You know, you know it's a good combination you know girls and jets and and that kind of stuff so um you know that really it was a good, it was a good appeal for that one uh we did uh, this, uh two episodes of slayers um again megan we you know very popular series again a lot of us are, you know kind of grew up in, in, in the gaming sort of um light so again a lot of uh you know a and d and d references and that kind of stuff you know, so because i was like i always refer to the you know, and, and uh, uh, people who know me from the streams uh, always say that um, you know uh, the romantic view you know, you know the way that we would you know we would picture vast Dungeons and dragons um, would be the record of a lot of wars okay yeah you, know, you know that's you know how, how we would vision uh, a, a, an ideal sort of uh, um, the advanced engine, you know, the party with the with the heroic fighter and his, uh, you know, sidekick, the elf, um, you know, the the you know, the, 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 the basically the female elf that's really, you know, probably just as skilled as, as, as he is. And then you got the little dwarf, you know, wielding the axe, you know, and uh, you know the the shifty eyed thief and the you know. Uh, Somewhat feeble and uh, you know forgetful, you know magic user, you know that kind. Of, so it, it's just sort of what you would think, uh, you know that 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 that, that what uh, that Ami is okay. But Slayers, okay, is sort of what really sort of happens when you actually play Dungeons and Dragons, 
and the the campaign goes kind of wacko. I.e., the the characters are overpowered for the for the campaign, and you, they just go around just wrecking things because their you know experience points are too high, strength too high, they have too many spells. You know, they just you know fireball and and and, uh, and burn everything, right? Um, so <laughs> anyway, so that that you know that's that, that's always my fun thing about the uh, players. Um, and of course, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, at three o'clock we're doing the uh, the second Tenshi Muyo movie, uh, the Daughter of Darkness. And again, um, Tenshi, th- you know, this is also in an era where um, Pioneer and you know, Genom, um, they were, you know, they were probably um, one of the um, best sort of uh, anime companies at this time, because really whatever they released, um, really. Um, couldn't go wrong. They, they really had a, a lineup of stuff that, that, that sort of came out that, that, that you just, you know, you, they, 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 they couldn't miss. I mean, they were doing, they had Ascaflone, uh, Tenshi Muyo, Fushigi Yugi, um, you know, then they did, uh, you know, even titles t- t- like uh, Duel and, uh, you know, uh, then, uh, you know, they uh, continue to come out with uh, with stuff like that. And this just, just, just one hit after another, then, you know, uh, I can remember uh, Trigon, uh, you know, Cowboy Bebop, and it's just bam, 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 bam. Just everything they came out was really good. So this one is for uh, June eight, uh, 18th of 2000, okay? And this is another short meeting. And again, we're, you know, we were um, uh, showing the uh, Ronin Kenshin TV series because at you know, this time, uh, you know, again, that's one of the more popular, um, you know, samurai type shows at that time, and it was really, uh, uh, really catching on at that time. Uh, we did uh, Gundam Wing episodes thirteen and f- uh, thirteen and sixteen, so you know, a block of uh, of Gundam Wing episodes. And again, that's one of those, those one, one of those series that we were trying to to, to do a couple episodes every uh, uh, every month, to, you know, to get people to come back afterwards uh, to see what was going on with that one there. And then we tried a new uh, again, geez, geez, to talk about new um, um, uh, you know you know pioneer releases here. Um, uh, the new Soul Bianca. Okay, now I, I was a really big fan of the old Soul Bianca, the original uh, OEVA series, uh, uh, you know, of Soul Bianca. Um, but uh, yeah, so now they released this new one, and uh, so then yeah, so we got that, and um, basically showed that one. That was really was you know very very popular as well. And so you can see what I mean when when you know they, they, that was another title that, that I forgot about uh, that that actually was really good uh, from that. So this is uh, like almost a year later, September eighteenth uh, of uh, two thousand one. Okay, and uh, again we're doing. Uh, so this one now is one of these uh, you know super extended meetings that that we did. Um, so again we 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 had a uh, uh, broken the 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 showcase into two different sections. Okay, uh, we had basically a, a sort of an earlier um, uh, the, you know, sort of afternoon block. Okay, and this was designed for you know the general audience. Okay, so we uh, we picked uh, Yamamoto Yoko, which was really good. Uh, Black Heaven, oh yes, that's another great classic Pioneer title. Black he- uh, you know Black Heaven. Okay, yeah, again, this, as I said Pioneer had had you know what was on a roll at this time, but uh, yeah, great show. Check it out. Uh, they also, uh, we also tried uh, our uh, our Sentai type uh, series, the Shinesman. Okay, so that was really really good. And um, yeah, and, and also the, 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 a really neat one, uh, the My Neighbors, the Yamadas. Okay, so this was one of those uh, you know kind of uh, you know the, 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 um, I remember we 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 were, we were um, uh, uh, you know talking to the uh, kind of the uh, studio for that. And um, we, you know, to, to, to get our, uh, you know, because we had a copy of the, of the Japanese um, version of that, which had English subtitles already on it. Um, but we were going through, and again, a lot of these titles, we um, got the permission to basically uh, to review and show these uh, uh, different animes uh, whenever possible, especially when we were, when we were playing the commercial releases of these particular videos. Um, we all got that, and we also had at this time also a um, a proper uh, Sloan um, uh, license, which is again, it's the for it's um it, that's a a general purpose viewing license for um, um, you, know, you know basically um, public performance 
um, things. Uh, so that covers music and it covers video and that kind of stuff. We had to use that for for like conventions and that kind of stuff. But uh, we actually had that. So that's so so we were covered for all that kind of stuff uh, in in a um, um, uh, you know uh, public performance uh, venue. Okay, uh, and then we only got that just because I said we got to a point where we were big enough. You know, we were getting you know closer to a hundred people. Um, you know, in the in the theaters, and there were some of these uh, you know these sort of movie presentations, these extended meetings that we're getting that were that were actually were filling virtually the entire lecture hall theater full of people. Okay, um, so that's what we needed that kind of stuff. So yeah, so that was a big feature movie, uh, the the the, the Amidas, uh, that was really good. Um, so again, we split the, 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 the meeting into two different parts. So the second part, we were doing uh, sort of the more quote the more adult, you know, kind of things. Not exactly hentai, just more, um, more, uh, 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 you know, had, you know, spicier scenes. How's that? That's just put it up. They had spicier scenes. Um, and then that section, we, yeah, we did uh, Eugene's um, uh, Sakura Diaries, which was really, you know, I, you know, nice artwork on that one. I love, uh, you know, I like Eugene kind of stuff. Um, Homeroom Affairs, uh, OVA 1 and 2, and Demon Fighter Kocho, the OEVA for that one. Uh, so that's so that's, that's sort of the lineup for the evening show. And again, the age is 17 and up, so you know, PG 17 rating was what we gave it um, for those ones. Uh, those will be on. Again, if you had a membership to the VJC, uh, the Vancouver Library, this entire day was free for you. You could just come in and you can, you know, watch anything you want. If you wanted to go out and get, uh, you know, those snacks or Subway or whatever, you can go out and, and then get that and come back in or whatever. Uh, we had, um, um, you know, ha uh, we had half days, so it, it was three bucks for the people who didn't have memberships, and it was five bucks for the entire day. So again, just to, you know, offset the, you know, the, 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 the price of the room uh, for those th kind of meetings, okay? January 21st, 2001, okay? So, again, I tell you, again, you know, Pioneer just wasn't, um, you know, they had it really going. So here you go. Uh, Jubei Chan, okay. Black Heaven. Nurse Nanako. Uh, double split, again. So Jubei Chan was, uh, is in uh, Black Heaven uh, are in the uh, upper part of the meeting. Vampire Princess Mew. Uh, and Excel Saga. Oh, that was that was a really strange show, but definitely very really good. That one, that one, uh, that one, I really enjoyed that one. Especially the the ending theme song was really really kind of cute on that one too, uh, with the, uh, the with the with the dog uh, basically with the translation for the entire ending theme song. That was kind of cool. Um, so yes, Excel, Excel Saga. Right, that was uh, good. And um, yeah, so then we got a you know a dinner break at uh, at four to uh, four o'clock to five o'clock. And then we came back for the uh, for the mature part of the the, the uh, meeting, which was uh, Amazing Nurse Nanako one and two, which is really surprising for for a pioneer title, but uh, definitely we put it that and uh, Berserk, okay, um, the, the 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 story for um, Gus, and this is the uh, special OVA episode um, that we made for that uh, for that one. So definitely that was a that was another really good sort of meeting uh, uh, there. Okay, so here's one of the, the, the one of the more modern ones, I guess you'd say. <laughs> I mean, you know, we uh, uh, went for a while, and, and then, then we uh, obviously, uh, you know, we got into uh, venues that were getting so big that we actually had to make actual conventions for. Um, you know, then, then we stopped doing these uh, small events, and uh, in, in exchange for doing, you know, concentrating on, on the larger um, uh, uh, venues here. So again, uh, August eighteenth, uh, two thousand two. We were doing uh, so we kind of broke everything into into um, a viewing blocks. Okay, so here we are. We're showing um, Princess Nine episodes one, two. Uh, again, another very you know um, that was a well put together sort of story um, anime. Okay, Princess Nine. I, I really in, enjoyed how they they went over every one of the characters that was in there and. You know, basically brought it all together and see how all the pieces fit together uh, in this team. So again, a really nice sort of female baseball team story. Okay, that's basically what it is, and and uh, it was nice. It's just it's a it was, it was a nice series. I I really liked that. One. Um, I really liked that one. That was good. Uh, again, more episodes of um, 
uh, Black Heaven, okay? Uh, and then like, oh yes, there's another one, Vandred, okay? So again, you know, you know, one could say this is one of those, you know, the start of the uh, the era of the uh, of the um, harem animes, okay? But yeah, Vandred was another good, you know, I, you know, title from them from, from those guys. It's just bam, it's just you know, you can just see, bam, 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 bam. You know, try again, uh, you know, Black Heaven, Vandred. You know, they just came out with all such good titles at this time. Um, and of course, yeah, the feature that they were doing is uh, a, a great teacher Onizuka, another great series. I mean, sure, some people kind of complain the animation doesn't look all that great, or you know, maybe uh, some people say lazy, but very good story. Um, I like those type of stories because it really kind of reminds me of things that happened uh, when I went to high school. Okay, you know, sure, you know, we, you know, I think I think probably everyone has issues. Um, or can remember from their high school um, times when they were, um, you know, bullied, or uh, you know, you know, the, you know, you have the issues of, of, you know, you know, whatever the jocks you've had, um, you know, whatever teenage pregnancy, you know, suicides, whatever um, happened in your school or whatever, and you know, I can pretty much say that they, they happened in in, 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 you know, in my, you know, tiny little. Um, um, uh, you know, city of Prince George. Um, uh, you know, they happen as much the same, but all the all you know, but in mixed in all that stuff is all the good stuff that happened too, and that uh, you know, and this sort of you know GTO um, and all these other various different types of you know these high school type dramas really remind me of that. I mean, and and much more so things like you know that and Orange Road that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I really like those type of the shows because I said that you know they were more you know. Sort of brings me back to that time with that, and, and, and all this new stuff like My Hero Academia and and uh, you know Food Wars and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I mean, high school was never like that. I mean, I, I mean, I get it. You're trying to make a different story. You're trying to make a different spin on high school stories, but that's not you know. I mean, minus the high school part out of it. You know, it could be anything, right? Right? It's just like what was you know. That's not what we went to high school for. Is to find the ways to beat each other up. Okay. And um, yeah, it's just, it's just, so so that I'm, that's not you know, so, you know my sort of you know forte. I mean, I just, I prefer things like you know the, the uh, you know more real life stories. That's why things like that, um, even shows like uh, um, uh, you know Degrassi, um, Northwood, um, they all resonate with me very much. So um, that's why you know, I really recommend if you if that's the sort of you know feel that sort of the, you know the, the, you know the experience that you got from when you went to high school. Um, sure, you know, check out uh, GTO. Okay, so this is uh, the um, anime showcase meeting for uh, September fifteenth, two thousand two. So one, the last one of the, sort of the the newer ones here. Um, okay, yeah, okay, see, 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 more of the pioneer stuff. Okay, they really had a chain link of pioneer stuff going on. So here we got um, Mia under seven. Okay, uh, uh, episode three and four. So the more continuation of uh, of that uh, series. A better man, uh, yeah. I, actually, I, I kind of like that series. That was, was that, it wasn't, um, you know, I wouldn't put it at the top of my list. I, I think I still like, um, you know, I still probably like Devil Man Lady better, uh, but uh, that was still pretty good, yeah. Um, and uh, the Gatekeepers, that was cool, yeah. Uh, you know, still like the artwork of the same, my say, the same Martin. Martian successor in the dash go a little bit better, but I mean, it, you know, that one's still in that sort of line, so that was great. Yeah, Gunbusters probably comes into mind too. Uh, but yeah, yeah, Steel Angel Crew to me, that that one was a that one was a cute series, you know, especially in that sort of uh, beginning of the era of the made animes. Yeah, but uh, definitely, yeah, that's uh, that was right up there. And again, we had their dinner break at uh, four to five o'clock. Then we did uh, two big uh, featured movies and OVAs. We did uh, Lupin the Third, Twilight Gemini. Uh, the movie, um, and we did Sorcerer on the Rocks, episodes one and two, um, in the uh, evening part of the uh, the thing. So again, one of those longer sort of extended movie thing. Uh, yeah, that was really good. Yeah. Okay. So here's the close up of the, of the color one that um that I basically uh, brought earlier here. 
for you people. Uh, let's see, put it over here so you guys can see it. So this is the one, the, the one of the color ones that, that I still have. Um, we made small color ones like this one, but um, later on, Fonda, uh, when he was working at TR Trades, um, you know, helped us out by making these really huge, gigantic poster ones because they actually got these uh, new printers, um, these new rolling printers that, that basically allowed you to print. You know, large banner size posters and that kind of stuff. So he helped us later on with those big, huge posters with those. But you know, we uh, yeah. So this is the, the close up of this one. So uh, February eighteenth, uh, two thousand one, uh, we made these color ones here for this one. Uh, this one uh, features um, uh, Mamote Shugaten. Okay, so again, more of the um, you know. Uh, uh, you know the guy and the angels uh, thing, right? So uh, you know, i.e., oh my god, this okay. For example, is another one of these, uh, of, of, uh, you know, th these type of uh, uh, anime. So Mamo the Shugo Den, Angel Sanctuary, you know, <laughs> more of that theme, I guess. Uh, uh, we're here for that. Um, we did Two Heart, uh, and I want to be an angel. Hmm, there's a big theme going on here. Okay. Uh, again, so you know, this was the beginning of that era where it's the guy, and you know she has basically, you know, I, for example, I guess, made a wish that he was going to be his girlfriend was an angel, and you know, or whatever, um, you know. So this is sort of also sort of featured in this thing. So again, you can see, um, unlike some of the earlier animes and that kind of stuff that we did uh, from 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 other shows, this is now totally devoid of quote mecha shows and and. And shows where you know people are like you know, you know shooting each other, or um, you know uh, you know basically like you know A D and D sort of uh, you know like you know getting away from the slayers, the berserks, and that kind of stuff where people are slashing and killing each other. Um, yeah, a little something different, right? Now we're getting into some more uh, you know real life kind of themed uh, things with uh, a little twist to it, I guess you say. So that's why you get things like you know like too hard. And I won't say so again, a, a different kind of anime. Uh, sort of assortment for different people, right? So, because I said, again, we were trying to get in, um, you know, so you can see this is like 2001, right? So, we're trying to get into different sort of topics of anime so that, uh, you know, the audience is not just, you know, guys looking for, you know, um, basically, you know, the three G's essentially, right? The girls, the guns, and the gore. Right, we're now we're trying to get into you know other types of animes. We're also all seeing, um, um, you know, uh, more females and that kind of stuff showing up at our meetings and that kind of stuff, wanting other kind of stuff. So again, uh, we had to basically, oh, we don't know, we had to show it, but you know, we wanted to ha have a different variety of different sort of animes and that kind of stuff uh, uh, out there, and unlike maybe today. Where everyone's sort of very segregated and very um, opinionated about the various different animes they, that they're willing to watch, we are still at a time where where people didn't really have um, you know segmented and and and, and sort of um, you know put their foot down and said, "Hey, I only want to watch Dragon Ball or I only want to watch Naruto or you know that kind of thing," and, and I'm not going to watch anything else. Or, or like uh, you know, like oh, this looks like a magical girl show. I'm not going to watch it, and you know they'll walk away, right? Um, I think uh, at this time there was this, this kind of uh, open-mindedness that uh, you know this is a new genre. There's a lot of stuff that's out there that they probably have never seen or, or have no idea what it is. Okay, even right? Because I'm saying when you look at something like Angel Sanctuary, okay, what could it be? I mean. It, could be something like X Japan or like like like, like you know X. Um, it could be you know some sort of uh, you know you know um, Bayonetta type of thing or, or whatever. It, we don't know, right? And so you you were willing to you know to to, to 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 come in and have a look at it to see what it's like, you know, see what kind of story it is, and 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 and, uh, and uh, you know and see what uh, what what turns up, and maybe you like it, yeah, hey, sure, maybe you won't, you know, but you're willing to give it a try, and people were willing to have a look at it. I mean, for example, Too Heart, okay, purely a love romance type of show, okay, it's that's what's what it is. It's, there's, there's no robots, no mechs, no guns, um, you know. Um, 
and uh, but we you know we stuck it in the lineup and you know and you know surprisingly a lot of people were willing to give it a shot. I mean, sure, it's only two episodes, so it's, you know it's like an hour or whatever. Um, people were surprisingly willing to give it a shot. Let's see what the show is about. And sure, if you didn't like it afterwards, fine. You know, you you know we obviously can't do anything about it. Just that you, you didn't like it, that's fine. You. Um, you didn't like it, and maybe we won't <laughs> put it in the next. We won't put it in, in, in uh, any more episodes of it in, in the next one, right? So that's, yeah, that's okay. Uh, May twentieth, uh, two thousand one. Okay, uh, an afternoon show, and again, like look at this, you know, Gavinum Pioneer, almost all like to a T, right? Duel, okay. Um, Parallel World Duel, that, that one was a great one. I, st- I said, I still love uh, uh, Nurse Nanako. That was like, you know, uh, people say that the, you know, the animation style and the, the breast physics are like really outrageous in that show. But I mean, it, it's, that's a fun show, really. It's, it, it's it, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's really nice. I, I, I really like that, that, that kind of thing. Uh, Second Dai Hoshi, Hoshinengi. That one was a, um, was a really classic series. Again, I think that was one of those series that kind of forgotten I guess you can say because I said uh, you know it, it, we were in the era of like all these you know shall we say prolific sort of um, um, you know sort of animes uh, like that uh, you know uh, Escaflone uh, Fushigi Yugi you know then all of a sudden we get this thing called you know Hoshinengi just kind of you know, just kind of slips right in there just kind of you know and then kind of you know kind of went by the wayside a little bit but definitely if you're into that sort of stuff uh, at, you know, and at this time period, was also you know one of those ones that kind of came in during that era and you know worked off the hype of that of that era. Uh, Gundam Wing, uh, the Endless Waltz uh, uh, movie. So again, we took the uh, all the Endless Waltz OEVAs and put them together into into a movie you know kind of feature, and uh, put them together for for uh, you know for the showcase here, uh, the show in this one. So that was a again n- another really strong. Uh, meeting full of really nice animes and that kind of stuff in there. There's another one. Okay, so the next one here, uh, March nineteenth, two thousand. Uh, Gundam, du- Gundam Double Eight of War in the Pocket. Uh, episodes one and two. So yeah, that was that one's a cool show. I, I, I you know, of, of all these OVA um, Gundams, you know, Double O Eight O, Double Eight Three, um, MSO Eight Team. Um, definitely, I would have to say. Um, I you know no MSO eight team you know probably on uh, you know has to be on top right right away. Um, I personally like double eight O over double eight three although although double eight three probably has more action, more um, you know kind of faster thing. But I just happen to like the artwork um, that's in double eight O and, and the message and that kind of stuff was really nice in double eight O. So that's but I mean it's, you know they're all very good. Things. You need to check those ones out. If you're gonna talk about um, Gundam OVAs, you, you really got you know those are the, the three key ones, the core ones that you need to really look at: Double Eight O, Double Eight Three, and MSO Eight Three. Maybe not in that order, but definitely you know uh, my personal favorite uh, Double um, MSO Eight Three. Okay, so we started the, the the afternoon with that one, then we did the uh, uh, um, uh, <laughs> get <laughs> you know then these giant robot shows, right? You know, um, uh, and Dagger uh, Three. The OEVA, uh, we had that. Um, we fan subbed that one and uh, put that one onto onto the thing, and uh, that was fun. You know, just because you know, um, I think at that time, um, the big thing uh, uh, at this time, because uh, you gotta kind of remember, is that a lot of these um, animes and that kind of stuff were doing, uh, you know, the, 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 there was a, you know the Brave series. Um, you know, so that's what things like that. Brave Police, Jay Decker, Brave um, Duan, which is Duguan, and things like that. There are all those things. Were all basically multiple robots combined together to make one big giant robot thing. Like so, for example, the Constructicons for for um, uh, uh, you know, like Transformers, and of course Transformers at this time was doing um, you know the entire Fire series, right? So you know the Fire uh, Fire Prime or whatever it was. Where he transformed into a fire engine, um, you know things like that. So that was a big thing, right? So at this time, so again, so we decided, okay, well, why not do sort of a mix of between the classic sort of uh, you know giant robot type shows. Um, 
and then of course we did a uh, uh, um, pat labor and um, we did because uh, so the pat labor uh, laser discs are formatted by um, topic uh, OVA a new OVA and an old TV series sort of combination right so uh, we basically took uh, two sort of episodes of pat labor and put them together into one sort of you know episodes uh, thing so that we can have like a, like a one hour block of pat labor okay um, and that was really kind of uh, cool there okay um, and then of course then w uh, the main feature for the thing that we did was we did the uh, the Neshko movie the Prince of Darkness okay so again this is one of the movies that um, at that time was not out and available commercially so we basically um, I think it was Rob um, no, who spearheaded the, um, the, 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 the project uh, for that and uh, they worked uh, you know quite independently uh, and uh, basically got the translation done and did uh, you know, a really uh, a thorough careful edit of the um, of, of the, uh, the of that movie got it all carefully flat up and that kind of stuff and we made a copy of that so um, the distinguishing the difference okay uh, I do have an episode where I uh, I went over how we fan subbed uh, or how we use the fan subbing equipment um, uh, in my in my uh, uh, list of different various episodes. I think we just did it like about uh, four, five, six, seven episodes ago. Um, we I showed uh, basically how we uh, fan subbed, um, for example, here um, uh, Red Riding with Cha Cha. Okay, and you can see it's all done live. It's all done uh, in real time. Okay. So if you make a mistake, um, you really have to, um, you know, uh, go back and start all over again. Okay, and so it's really, really a painful task, <laughs> a really painful task, to do um, uh, fan subs because again, uh, if you screwed up or uh, you know the time is off or whatever, you literally had to start all over again, re-edit it all over again, and you know. It was really, um, you know, <laughs> trying someone's patience, if you will. Um, so, you know, so to get something as timed, as, as, as clean as something that we'd use in a production like this, um, took a lot of effort, okay? Um, a typical run would take, an, a typical run and, and edit would take probably five hours to do for about a uh, half an hour worth of video, okay? So you can imagine on a two hour feature movie, you would need almost 20 hours of time sitting in front of a computer, in front of a, a word processor, um, sitting there correcting, you know, tenths of a second uh, uh, numbers, right? You know, so basically, you know, be like 10 seconds and, you know, five tenths of a second. Um, you know, we want this subtitle to appear and then, you know, let's stay on the screen for four seconds so that means you would got 14 seconds 14.5 seconds or whatever you want to take it off the screen but maybe you don't want it to linger on too long because it'll crash into the next title so you have to go 14.4 seconds or something like that and so you have to sit there and you have to go you know, not only analyze everything in real time figure out wh where it all goes but you know figure out the time and that kind of stuff again if you want to look at uh, uh, a little more detail on how that, you know, how lengthy that process is. Go back and listen uh, and watch, uh, you know, how Arctic Animation fan subbed um, Red Riding Hood Cha Cha, and then you'll you'll see just how painful that process could be. Anyway, so yeah, that one, I remember that one. That was one of the projects that uh, that, that Rob uh, helped me you know, work on, and we showed basically the Nadeshko movie um, at, one, at one of the showcases here, uh, which was really good. Okay, so. Uh, this is the February uh, 17th, uh, 2002 uh, sort of a thing. Now again, um, being, you know, February and being, quote, you know, Valentine's Day or whatever, um, we sort of tried to theme this particular, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, um, showcase of uh, animes to be more, you know, Valentine's Day friendly, shall we say? 
uh, because again, you think it's, you know the seventh. We always do our, all, all the meetings on, on 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 the Sunday because you know we figure you know most people would probably have the most amount of time on a Sunday. Uh, we usually do the the on in the afternoons. So if you had to go to service or whatever, you can still do it in the morning, and then so your afternoons would still be. Well, we'll be still clear enough that you'd actually come in and, and come out to one of our meetings. So again, um, block one, we uh, had uh, two episodes of Mamote Shugaten, which is again, you know, um, you know, guy and you know, falls in love with, with the angel ish kind of thing, right? Um, uh, you know, Love Hina, which again, uh, you know, your um, <laughs> for a better word, uh, your um, a harem building uh, anime. Um, we had something really new called Anime Runner um, uh, uh, Karami. Um, that one was an interesting uh, situation. That was again one of those movies that we recently, like, like we just like we recently got the uh, the um, the uh, the um, uh, so shall we say a screener for that uh, thing from that, and, and so we, uh, we we when we were asking for permission and, and looking for screeners for that, we got actually sent one. Okay, so again, we had this uh, um, um, copy before it actually you know, hit the shelves and that kind of stuff. We were able to take it and show it at one of our meetings like this, um, and uh, we that. And so that's a lot of people kind of you know one of the misconceptions. Okay, I think uh, that we had at the earlier time is that, and especially now um, uh, with uh, with the modern um, fan subbers and that kind of stuff, the digital fan subbers and that kind of stuff. Um, the, one of the misconceptions that would that that, would, that sort of happen is that um, is that uh, people think that it was really it was really kind of um, us against the companies. Really, the, 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 there was a sort of feeling that um, you know it was the anime companies were like you know this one big sort of corporate entity or whatever and then the fan subbers were just like uh you know, a, you know another entity going against them okay and and they would never see eye to eye and they would really be basically on, on opposite sides of the fence and really that wasn't the relationship that we had back in in in, in the day that we did it okay um the 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 philosophy that we had that um, a lot of people, uh, you know, have lost. Okay, I know a lot of fan, the, the original sort of. Um, I know that the 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 sediment or the or the, or the feeling or the the you know, I said the philosophy um, of the of the modern fan suburbs is that you know we uh, you know we would like you to you know um, you know watch our fan sub or whatever but we'd also want you to support the original companies to, to and buy their products and that kind of stuff right and it's hard to say that for the modern fan subber because they've done because the way the technology is done the quality is so much better uh, there's no loss in quality uh, when you you know when you copy if you make one copy to another because that's because everything's not digital They've taken so much time and so much effort in like font setting, type you know, like, like type setting, formatting, doing all the little uh, graphical things and animations and karaoke lyrics and all this crap. Okay, essentially, um, and they made it to a point where it is so well, so finished. It's, it's like a finished product that you don't need to go. And buy the commercial version because everything on this thing is is, is, is tight, and it is uh, basically you know like a finished product, okay. And um, that's probably where that adversarial thing comes comes in because I, I think back in in our day, we worked really really closely with the commercial company. We knew when and where they were gonna you know where they, you know where they're going. Um, we knew that when they licensed something. Um, you know, we were not. You know, we would pull uh, the you know the copies of what we were doing on uh, from distribution, and we would no longer distribute it anymore. And you know, basically, and we would um, you know promote their their um, releases and get people to you know basically you know suggest people to, to buy or rent or do whatever uh, you know get their co you know their commercial copy because again, 
their copy would be you know obviously the higher quality because you know they would have the access to the masters um, you know uh, they um, you know would be able to master you know distribute it so you could you know go to uh, you know let's, let's say you know Suncoast video or something like that and they'd be able to you know readily buy that thing right off the shelf okay um, and uh, you know and just basically you know we, you, as a fan server, uh, like a physical fan server, um, you could, like I said, stop distribution. You could stop distributing the tapes or whatever, and uh, then no one else would be able to spread the, the you know, the, the uh, you know, or make copies of the, the, the tapes afterwards. Because again, every copy that you make after the tape that would still degrade and it'd be worse in quality. So I mean, you know, in order to get the best quality, you'd obviously go out and buy the commercial version. You see, so in the modern day, you couldn't do that, right? Because the modern day, it's everything's digital. You throw it out on the internet somewhere, it really can't be deleted. It can't be controlled. Okay, so that's why um, that sort of philosophy doesn't work in the modern era. Okay, and that's what's lost again with the modern era and, and, and what we still had in the, in the previous era. So, um, so when we were able to basically you know contact the the, 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 the you know the company for anime Kurumi and said, hey, we got. Uh, this thing, you know, you know, coming up, you, you know, do we have something that uh, that uh, you want to showcase or show it? Then by all means, we, you know, they, you can send us a screener or whatever. We can put it up there. We can show, it. and then people would, you know, have a look at it. And say, hey, that looks pretty good. You know, whatever I might want to buy a copy of that, and, and you know, they can, they, they're perfectly able to do that. Okay. Um, and then we had that kind of relationship with them. And again, in, in a future episode, I'll show you um, all the various different flyers and all the promo sheets that these commercial companies would send us. Um, you know, in, in that. So, can you imagine that, right? You know, Bandai, A Division, or a lot of stuff would send, you know, promo material to the clubs, to us, to, to individual fans, right? To tell us, hey, you know, we got all this stuff coming out. Here's our catalog. Can you show it to people that are interested in anime? You know, you know, to show them that we, you know, here's our stuff. You know, uh, they're able to buy all this stuff from us. You know, show it to them, right? Like, you know, that doesn't happen in a modern. Day. You, you're not going to get, you know, Funimation sending a catalog of, you know, to the fan suburbs of Naruto to say, you know, to say, hey, you know. We've got uh, you know the next four DVDs of uh, Naruto coming out. Can you uh, you know tell your fan base, hey, we got four videos or you know, four DVDs of, of Naruto uh, arc or whatever coming out. Uh, can you tell your you know your fan group or whatever your fan base uh, you know to come out and buy it or whatever? Uh, you know, I, you know think like that that just doesn't happen in the modern day, right? It's just you know, it's almost adversarial. Uh, what has happened, uh, you know, in the modern day? But back then, we had support. We had, um, you know, they wanted, you know, because like I said we were, we, like, so we were fans of anime, um, and we had all the people that are close to us, do you know, do, you know who are you know, interested in anime. So the anime companies wanted to get to us, right? You know, because because we were the we were the emerging customers, okay. Like, sure, you could you know um, you know put a, a newspaper ad or you know maybe make a commercial or something like that, and you know you know try to just just you know fan out there to to everyone, but not everyone was an anime fan, right? So the quickest way and the most efficient way was to get right into an anime club to get into let's say a fan subbing group or whatever, and let's just you know give you guys. You know the the advertising tools and that kind of stuff, and then you guys can you know basically spread the word that hey you know we've got these animes here's a catalog you know here's all the animes that that, that, that we've got on on, on VHS a laser disc a DVD or whatever you know here we go again I'll, I'll do it in another episode where we go over that kind of stuff but uh, you know in this episode I just want to cover all this kind of stuff here anyway so. Great! This is one of those great opportunities that we were able to show some anime that uh, was upcoming, and we got it ahead of time. Okay, and so this the final feature. Of course, we're doing uh, the Oh My Goddess movie again. I love that series. It was basically we put all the OVAs of Oh My Goddess put together into, uh, into a condensed movie-like sort of thing. And again, uh, you know, great sort of Valentine's Day sort of thing there. 
Okay. So you can see from the, uh, from these examples, you know, so we've uh, you know done like years of of uh, you know showing anime to the public. Okay, just trying to get anime out to uh, those people who you know obviously don't have an access to anime. They don't know where to get it. Uh, and obviously in this era. Um, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, video stores, blockbusters and whatnot, um, they really didn't have a lot of different anime. Sure, you know, Akira, you know, Robotech maybe, Gunbusters, you know, it's just a lot of video like that. But what happens if you want to get other stuff, right? I mean, you know, what are, um, you know, other types of uh, uh, things like, you know, maybe you might be interested in Sailor Moon or something or whatever, and, and, and other magical girl shows, where would you get that kind of stuff? Because that doesn't show up on uh, the shelves on, on Blockbuster and that kind of stuff. So where do you go to get that? So again, this is where, uh, you know, we were trying to find a source and trying to find different ways to get anime out to different people and show people um, what kind of a different animes there were out there, okay? Because I said, you know, maybe you were a big fan of Dragon Ball what else was out there um, that might not, you know, obviously might not be like, you know, fighting show like Dragon Ball, but you know, what else was out there um, uh, in this genre called anime? And uh, you know, maybe you might be interested. Oh, sure, it, you know, maybe give it a try, and you, you and you're not interested. Okay, I mean, that, that's okay, right? You, you're allowed to not like something, right? Um, but yeah, this is a, you know, again, a different era, a different time. Um, again, I think this time was also one of those eras where people were more interested in the anime for the fact that it was anime, right? Not, you know, people weren't interested in it because, oh, you know, I can cosplay this or I can, you know, you know, draw a picture or I can Photoshop a, a picture of something and I can sell it or, or, you know, I can, you know, do, you know, basically a lot of, you know, things like self-promotion and that kind of stuff. That wasn't there, you know. There, the, the, there wasn't, um, you know, dividing ourselves into. I'm only interested in, let's say, magical world shows. I'm only interested in isekais. You know, I'm only interested in, you know, you said it. that sort of thing didn't really happen, right? Or wasn't happening at this time. It was still very young. Uh, everyone came in with a really open mind. Um, our club was trying to, be, you know, you know tried to be very. Um, Inclusive. It was very open. We didn't care if you were male, or female. It didn't care if you were, uh, you know, college students or high school students or you know, um, you know, people who are retired. Uh, you know, you know, we had the whole, the, the entire sort of gamut of people and group. Um, you know, and we're all talking about anime. You know, uh, like anime fans. You know, various different types of topics. And again, that's kind of something that that doesn't really even happen in the modern day today, even online or at conventions and kind of stuff. It's just sort of, I don't know, we've lost that sort of community, if you will. Um, and uh, we've all kind of grouped up into people who sort of think the same way we do and sort of watch the same anim animes that we do and, you know, kind of support you, you know, like the followers, right? Um, we've kind of grouped into that sort of thing and that's one sort of you know sort of different di dichotomy that sort of happened with anime uh in the re in the more recent era and you know i can't say it's it's you know it's uh, uh it's different i don't know if it's it's good for the anime but it's it's definitely different so anyway so what you want to do right now is you want to go down below click like and click subscribe and you get some more episodes uh, of the history of uh, anime and all the various things that go it, uh, to it. So again, I've got um, some letters and some more uh, you know, promo material that we're going to go over in future episodes, okay? So, until next time, see you again.